Welcome everyone to the Q3 Roadmap webinar. I'm so excited to have you joining with us today as we go through all these amazing features. My name's Chase, I'll be your host, and I'm joined today with Sundar, Eric, and Greg, each looking after key pillars across the Jump Cloud platform. Keep in mind, this is Roadmap, this is software, and so everything that we'll be talking about today might have some shifts or some forward-looking statements, so please just keep that in mind as we go through these features. And before we dive into all the amazing stuff heading your way, I wanted to do a quick recap of all the things that we've delivered within the first half of the year. We had over 170 releases, and this includes everything that you can touch and see and operate within the Jump Cloud platform, as well as everything under the hood to ensure that it's a secure and resilient platform as we continue to scale. We had some amazing highlights, including patch management to making sure that those devices are up to date, HRS integrations to ensure that your onboarding is smooth and seamless, iOS support to cover even more devices within the Jump Cloud platform, as well as extending Jump Cloud Protect across more resources. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into what's next. And I'll be handing over to Eric. Eric, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I hope I was actually successful in unmuting. Uh, so I'm Eric Avigdor. I run product management for the Identity and Access Management Group within Jump Cloud. Um, and I'll take you away uh, talking about a lot of uh, you know exciting stuff that we're doing within identity and access management. So let's start um, moving along. And when I you know when I say identity and access management, I mainly mean everything that has to do with identity management as well as access management and authentication. I'll start up with identity management, taking you through a, a very interesting list of, of things we're doing. H2 is packed with an enormous amount of, of very exciting news. So we, we started on a journey of welcoming identities from anywhere, being able to integrate with many different third-party identity sources, including both third-party directories as well as um, HR sources, HRIS sources. We want to be able to welcome identities from anywhere as well as provision identities to um, everywhere. One of the things we're actually adding is the ability to to uh, integrate with integrate with integrations that require OAuth uh, support uh, via REST APIs. So we'll be adding that support in Q3, which increases both uh, security and authorization capabilities within the integration itself. We're adding the ability to import user updates. So now it's no longer all about importing new users. We'll actually be able to, um, to import changes and updates to users. So if I, have moved from the product management group to the engineering group or the finance group that will be reflected uh, within an HR system and helps will, will be imported into Jump Cloud as well. So access decisions can be taken based on that. One of the things that's coming um, soon, and when I say soon, I mean in the second half of the year, is actually the ability to export identities through our REST APIs as well into HR environments and um, applications through identity management. Um, but we're also looking at scheduling user imports. We know that user imports is, um, users are created, uh, users change, users are modified, that happens frequently. We want to be able to allow admins to schedule, schedule those imports so those do not need to happen uh, manually. Let's move on and show you a few other interesting things that we're uh, walking through. I'm quickly skipping through this simply because we really have a whole lot of interesting content. Um, one of the interesting things that we've added lately is if we can go back to the previous slide, please, Chase. Ah, exactly. Is the ability to schedule the activation of a new user. So. Um, we've added the ability to, to identify users, put them in a suspended state once they are created, so they don't need to be activated in that same given moment. Let's say we have 50 users joining um, the company on August 15th. How can we plan ahead and how can uh, we admins set up that user for success by setting up access rules, group assignments, and actually not allow yet access to all of the environments that that user may have access to in the future, but actually schedule that activation for day zero when that um, employee actually joins the company. That will be available as well uh, with dates that can be pulled from HR environments or can be manually entered into um, that scheduled activation. Moving on to um, the next slide, 
We're adding some automation around group membership and mainly around the ability to add more conditions on different attributes that define which group a user should be um, part of. Uh, in the past, the ability to do that was fairly fixed with um, attributes ba uh, based on single attributes. We're adding the support for multiple attributes to help define and help suggest what that, uh, which group that user uh, should become a member of. And as part of that, we're adding some um, operators to allow you to configure some more sophisticated rule, for example, um, or operators, or in the future, more sophisticated search capabilities with starts with and ends with, and in the future, wildcard uh, wild card searches. Um, that will actually allow us in the future, in the very uh, close future, to actually allow you also to automate the group membership of a user that has newly been created. Um, if you think about this uh, bigger picture story, what you will see from us later on in the year is a full-blown automated scheduled flow from the moment the user is created, either in Jump Cloud or in an HR system, how that flows into Jump Cloud, how that gets provisioned, how, how a user gets authorized, and eventually how a user gets activated on uh, their start day. Um, another aspect of, of uh, automating groups is we're coming out with the ability to export user groups um, on integrations with Azure Active Directory. Moving on to the uh, last topic for identity management, on the single sign-on front, we, we've reached a point of maturity with you know, nearly 800 applications, SAML integrations. We really want to invest more in additional aspects of SSO integrations. And the two main areas we're focusing on, um, two, maybe I'd say even three, the first one is OpenID Connect, which is coming out uh, within the next, um, within the coming quarter. Um, the ability to integrate with homegrown applications, with um, other SSO applications, web applications that require or are uh, actually allow you to use OpenID Connect for SSO integrations but we're also focusing on adding skim capabilities for, for identity provisioning, for identity management on more web applications, cloud SaaS applications that Jump Cloud manages. That will allow you to simplify the entire onboarding process and to help create accounts for users as they come in. One more aspect I'd like to mention, uh, to mention which is actually not written on the slide, is that we're going to simplify the process of identifying um, SSO integrations and simplifying the ability to configure different applications. We'll tell you more about that probably um, during our next webinar. Moving on to the authentication space and access management space, which is a very cool area, very close to my heart. Um, we are coming out in, in, um, in Q3 with the ability to add more authentication options to more environments. One of them being um, the ability to authenticate to RADIUS environments with third-party credentials. The first uh, capability we're releasing is actually the ability to authenticate to RADIUS endpoints uh, with Azure AD credentials. Um, this may apply or not apply depending on a specific use case that you may have today or uh, may be completely irrelevant for you. However, if there is a use case that requires your Wi-Fi in office or your VPN to be authenticated specifically with Azure AD credentials, that is something that we will, um, that we will support. In addition to that, we are looking into additional uh, credentials that may be added in the future. One of the things that you'll be seeing coming right after that, which will actually uh, be even um, more interesting to some extent, is the ability to support certificate-based authentication, the ability to generate certificates, provision them onto devices, both user certificates and device certificates, to allow certificate-based authentication onto RADIUS endpoints. So imagine a scenario where instead of typing in your username and password into your uh, VPN client, you would now be automatically authenticated using a certificate, either automatically or on a prompt, um, using certificates, which is both more secure and passwordless and a passwordless experience, um, onto these radius endpoints, be them VPN or Wi-Fi. Um, moving on to a um, another aspect of driving more multi-factor authentication and increasing security around more IT resources managed by Jump Cloud, 
we, we've been working on adding multi-factor for LDAP managed environments. So any application you may have on-prem or any um, LDAP authenticated environment within your um, IT organization that requires LDAP authentication, that will now be supported as well, which basically I say is the culmination of, of a long journey we, we embarked on to, to bring multi-factor authentication to every IT resource managed by Jump Cloud. Uh, that is available for the admin portal, for the user portal, for SSO web applications, for um, device logins, for radius endpoints, and now also for um, LDAP applications. Moving on to another interesting point, um, we are continuously investing in Jump Cloud Protect. That is our, you know, our flagship authenticator within uh, Jump Cloud, our mobile application that is available for you to authenticate to uh, a variety of different Jump Cloud managed environments and uh, IT resources. And one of the things that we've noticed as missing that also we've heard from you, our customers, that is that, that is significant from a security aspect, uh, from a security perspective, is the ability to notice um, on a push notification where that push notification was actually requested. So. Not enough that um, to identify that it's coming from the US, but maybe important to realize that it's coming from Austin, Texas, right? Or from, from, from the Denver area. So when a user receives that request, they can actually see, oh, whoops, that is coming from Nashville. I'm currently not in Nashville. That is a bit weird. I will deny, uh, I will deny that access request. And the next thing I will do is I will flag that to my IT admin or to my CISO as a security risk. Um, there's more coming into Jump Cloud Protect, but we'll tell you about that later on as the year progresses. Moving on to um, two or three, um, actually two or three very interesting um, additions that we're adding into, into the portfolio. The first one is conditional access. We've supported for a while now the ability to support um, device trust as well as uh, geofencing and the ability to identify specific IP ranges where a user may be coming in from. We want to add content and we want to add value into um, our conditional access and zero trust offering. And we've chosen initially to focus on device posture conditions. We're starting with disk encryption and OS version, but there will be more coming. So we've heard from many, many Jump Cloud customers across all regions in Americas and EMEA in Asia Pacific, that the ability to identify that a device is managed is great. It would be also very nice to be able to um, assess whether uh, the disk is encrypted, whether there is a specific OS version deployed on that, um, on that machine, and whether we can accept access from this specific device. Um, we will continuously be telling you as the year progresses about more and more conditions that we'll be adding into, um, into our conditional access engine. And I'd like to uh, finish up with telling you about two very exciting projects that we're working on as we speak. The first one, uh, if we can move on to the next slide, is um, passwordless authentication. This is not um, obviously news, right? I mean, the entire market is has been telling us for a while, and the entire market is progressing towards passwordless flows, the ability to authenticate without using my my um, my password, my domain password, uh, or my local password. And we are definitely um, going after this this trend, which helps increase security. It helps improve usability, simplifies. Uh, user login, reduces password lockouts, reduces uh, password resets, which is very annoying uh, for IT admins and very time consuming. And, and uh, to, that, to that end, what we're doing is that we're adding flows to the Jump Cloud login process that will actually introduce a new flow that will allow a user to um, log in with an identity first flow that first introduces his uh, identity, which could be um, his email, and later on, Jump Cloud will determine what that user needs to do in order to authenticate into Jump Cloud. We were looking at initially deploying that for SaaS applications, web applications, the user portal, 
passwordless flows, which include Jump Cloud Protect with biometric verification. So the level of security will be maintained. Um, and having said that, less and less users will need to use password in less and less um, use cases. Um, obviously, that is a that is not a, si a silver bullet that uh, solves passwords everywhere, but it is a um, a first step into the passwordless domain. Uh, and we will keep investing in this as we move along. Um, moving on to the last topic for my section, and this is the first time we're actually bringing this to to the to to you, our customers, um, as as you know, a formal uh, announcement. We are working heavily and intensely on releasing password management capabilities into Jump Cloud. Um, that is a technology we've brought into the Jump Cloud family, and that is something you will be seeing coming to both um, a, uh, a limited availability and then later on into general availability later on in the year, where this is something that falls very much in line with the entire Jump Cloud philosophy, which is we want to allow you, our admins, our customers to allow easy access onto any IT environment. And if up until now that meant lo logging users onto devices and web applications and, and VPNs and Wi-Fi's and NAS environments, now it will also mean you will, that you will allow users easy access onto password managed applications. Um, if you think about these two last slides that we've talked about, these two last concepts, what this eventually will mean for you is that Users on one hand will have easy access eventually with single sign-on across all environments, including password managed applications, and eventually get to the point where passwords can be completely removed, managed behind the scenes, even for password for legacy password managed applications, where when logging on to Jump Cloud, users will get access to, to all environments. Um, I think that is my last slide, and with that, I'll hand this over to my good friend Greg. Oh no, there is actually one more. Sorry, Greg. So, <laughs> so um, the mobile admin app. We've been talking about that for I think um, the past few months. Coming out with a an app that will um, help admins manage um, the two most annoying uh, and and most time consuming aspects of of uh, managing users, user identities, which is user lockouts and expired passwords. A user gets locked out, you're not in the office, you're not in front of your machine. How do you unlock that account? How do you help that user through uh, renewing their password? So now you will have an app that will easily assist you unlocking accounts from anywhere, and we will be adding content into that app as we move along. And now, Greg, it's your floor. Wonderful. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so I'll do a quick intro. Uh, so uh, my name is Greg Armanini. Uh, I lead the devices portfolio here at Jump Cloud. Um, excited to be chatting with you today. Um, what you'll see, I'm going to go through some high-level updates. There's a ton, ton, ton in flight for devices, uh, but I'm going to focus on some of the key highlights. And, uh, you know, depending on what else comes up, uh, we can always handle that in Q&A. Uh, so let's uh, get going. All right, so first up, um, this is both a uh, sort of a, a re-announcement and a status update. Uh, last quarter, I talked a little bit about remote assist. Um, we are still charging the hill uh, working on remote assist. and. Um, it is definitely going to be available for you all to try and use in Q3. Um, remote Assist, just as a reminder, is going to be many, many use cases. There's an entire portfolio we're working on in this category. Um, but the first use case is what we call a live assist mode. Uh, I'll contrast that with uh, what would be known as a silent assist or an unattended assist mode. Um, we're starting with live. Uh, which essentially means um, uh, if an end user needs help, uh, they can, you know, contact support uh, and um, the admin can reach out to them and start a live assist session. Now, this initially is going to be user opt-in, meaning uh, the admin will um, send the user a session code and the user will put it in and then start the session. So think about it. 
uh, you know, from an opt-in perspective and a privacy perspective is being very similar to what you might do with a Google Meet. Uh, once you're in that session, um, the admin can request control. And the user will grant that. Uh, what you see here uh, are some visuals about how this works, where an admin can initiate the session. That's in the screen above in the admin console. And um, the admin will have a view uh, similar to below, where they can actually see the user's desktop once the user accepts. Uh, and they both will have little control bars to determine uh, when to allow access or when to kill the session. Um, the idea here is that the admin can do anything on the machine. They could uh, go to the command line, add or remove an app. They could do training, right? Show a user how to use a tool. Um, you can do just about anything here. So this is a good catch-all use case. Again, this is going to be available to um, customers here very shortly uh, in um, beta in Q3 uh, and then uh, GA to come. So we're really excited about this. This one's going to be a really awesome addition to the suite, uh, especially given the reality of remote first work. So I'm personally quite excited about this. Next, Mr. Chase. Um, so what would a Q3 webinar be without mention of Apple and Day Zero? Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar uh, with the, the life of uh, device management, Day Zero simply is when the new major OS version drops, uh, things don't break. And uh, we are already looking at the Apple betas. For those of you who follow Apple, WWDC was in June. Uh, and they announced all sorts of new things. Uh, uh, believe it or not, there's not a ton of new things. There's going to be some interesting things around uh, platform identity. Uh, many of you have heard in the in the news that uh, Apple, Microsoft, and others are starting to embrace uh, FIDO essentially over time. Um, that's something we're following very closely. We're very excited about. Uh, but for the purposes of today's conversation, we're really thinking about just making sure that Mac OS 13, iOS 16, um, you know, are working as expected. And most notably, for those of you who won't be ready to upgrade on day zero, uh, we will have a block policy in place. So this is something we will typically do uh, and get that to you uh, well before uh, the last beta drops and turns GA. So um, hopefully the message you take away from this is no news is good news and we're already thinking about this. So no need for concerns when the time comes in the fall. All right, let's talk patching. So um, for those who may be living under a rock uh, in the Jump Cloud world, um, you know, patching has been a, a really uh, exciting feature that we released uh, earlier at the end of Q1. Um, it's an amazing, amazing uh, feature. Um, we're really excited about it. We're getting all sorts of wonderful feedback from, from customers like yourselves, um, telling us how much the OS patching is helping. Uh, on Windows, it's uh, just really making Patch Tuesday a thing of the past. Uh, on Mac, having the ability to, um, you know, prompt users to upgrade or update has been really impactful as well. The question that everybody's asking is, when do we start doing apps? I'm pleased to finally say that yes, we are working on apps, and we're going to be starting with browsers. Uh, browsers are by far the most popular enterprise app for obvious reasons. Um, and, and of course, uh, for those of you who also follow the CVE feeds, probably the most vulnerable. So we're starting here. Um, and what you should expect is a cross-platform view on the desktop of uh, Firefox, Chrome, um, and even Edge. Um, and, uh, you know, we will be, uh, you know, making sure that we provide uh, some really smart out-of-box policies that work globally for you to um, put uh, patching in place for these. So uh, the way to think about it is, um, you know, imagine being able to uh, not just nag the user, but force restart. So that's, that's the real interesting thing here. There will be a lot more that we're doing from the security perspective on these policies. You can see here in this visual, right? Uh, imagine having an OS patch tab and a browser management tab. Imagine being able to set different uh, 
we're going to have presets, but you can override those presets for different security and update parameters. Um, and then, of course, you'll be able to see your fleet view and what your settings are for um, those, uh, those browsers. Uh, of course, we will have reporting on that as well. And uh, we're excited to uh, have this come out here in Q3. For those of you um, using Patch, it's uh, already it's going to be a great upgrade. For those of you who are not using Patch, you absolutely need to check this feature out. Uh, it's really a game changer in terms of time saved and peace of mind. Uh, so with that said, um, the one thing I'll add here, um, most folks are going to be saying, OK, what about some of the other apps? And the answer is we're working on those too. Uh, this is just the most important by far. Uh, and you should expect to hear more from us in Q3, Q4, and beyond. All right, commands. So um, a brief reminder for those of you uh, who uh, didn't attend the Q2 webinar, uh, last time we talked about um, improving time to live on uh, commands that you send down to a device. Um, it was 10 minutes, it's now 10 days. So um, the next step in the journey of improving commands, which is used you know, uh, very heavily on desktop, um, is to give you visibility. And this has been a big project for us. Um, what we're going to be delivering in Q3 uh, is a visualization, uh, you can see that here, um, where we can say what, key, what uh, commands are pending for a given group of devices or device. Um, and so you can go in, you can modify that. Um, and what I've shown here is you could actually cancel it if you want, right? And so this is giving you a lot more control and a lot more visibility so that you can feel more confident about what's happening in terms of managing your fleet. Now, um, you know, this is a, a big project uh, and uh, we're very excited about it, um, but there will be more to come. Uh, you know, so we are thinking about many of the things that you've asked us to help you with on commands. So as an example, having triggers, right, on enroll, run these commands, uh, on uh, restart, run these commands. So we are thinking about those actions, and those are things that um, will hopefully fast follow this effort. Um, so uh, again, uh, we're really excited about this. We want to get feedback on it. Um, I'm hoping this really improves uh, a lot of folks' day-to-day -day lives as well. So um, good, good progress here from the team doing commands. Okay, um, so another thing that I'm pretty excited about um, is uh, enhancements to our BitLocker policy. So it's probably no surprise that um, FDE for Mac and Windows are, are perhaps two of the most um, popular policies at Jump Cloud. Um, and what we're really doing, uh, if you think about what we announced uh, last quarter, which is broader support on Windows for different domain join types. So uh, when, I, when I started nine months back, um, the Jump Cloud agent only really dealt with Jump Cloud uh, domain join use cases. Now we can handle both Azure AD as well as AD join. Uh, so we can do telemetry, uh, we can do commands, software management. Uh, and then last uh, June, uh, we announced policy support. And um, what you can do is uh, basically run any device with Jump Cloud uh, from a domain join type perspective, and we can still apply management policies. There, there are caveats, right? If you're using another MDM, uh, you need to be thinking about that. If you're already using um, you know, GPOs, you've got to be thinking about that. So uh, obviously there's caveats that apply. Um, but we do know that uh, more and more folks are going to be starting to uh, look at Jump Cloud for BitLocker. Um, to date, what we've had is what I'll say is a sort of a, a simple fire and forget policy. Um, and it essentially gets you, um, you know, out of box encryption of the system disk, uh, which is good. Um, it's simple, right? And it has the ability for you to, to view a recovery key and help your users out in the event of an emergency. So we're all well and good. Um, you know, 75, 80% of our customers are happy. Um, we recognize that there are more and more uh, folks using this. Uh, Jump Cloud's growing and we're starting to see that there's more we can do, of course. Uh, so first step, and this is what we're working on now, is to enhance statuses. Um, so uh, imagine just having uh, different visibility into uh, the various use cases that, or statuses for um, you know, where you're at. Uh, meaning, uh, is BitLocker enabled, not enabled? 
you know, where are you at in the encrypting journey? Um, is it 100%? Um, is it decrypting? Is it suspended? Like we're going to provide, you know, visibility into the various um, uh, states. So that will help you in terms of knowing uh, where you're at in the process. Um, we're also going to be enhancing uh, system slash device insights, um, you know, to allow you to see uh, the presence of TPM modules on devices. So that'll give you better uh, visibility into your fleet and to see what's happening. Um, so that's incoming soon. Um, we're also working in parallel on extending uh, what we can encrypt. So today, many of you know, we can only encrypt system disk. Um, what we're working on is the ability to encrypt all the fixed disks on the machine. So uh, again, something that we're targeting for Q3 may bleed into Q4, but you know, these are all things that you should expect to see. Um, and there's going to be more. So um, under advanced configuration, uh, this is definitely not landing in Q3, but we're gonna continue momentum just like we did with uh, support for different domain join types. We're gonna keep going on BitLocker. Um, so, Having uh, different troubleshooting and automations around resetting TPMs if something fails, so adding resiliency there. Um, making sure we can encrypt removable drives, that's something that comes up on occasion. We want to make sure we cover that use case. Um, and then also fast encryption, uh, basically just encrypt use space. Uh, so, um, you know, Hopefully, this is good news for many of you. Uh, we, of course, want to get feedback. You can always uh, ask us questions in the community um, and tell us what else you need. So uh, I'll pause there and we can go on to the next topic. Okay, um, Apple VPP. So we talked about this, I believe, last quarter. So I wanted to give you an update. It, it's uh, We put a little more work into it. Uh, the good news here is uh, for those of you um, who are already using Mac OS with VPP, um, iOS and, uh, and iPad OS are coming out soon, actually very soon. Uh, it's in EA now internally, and uh, we're already using it uh, on our demo environments. Uh, this is a screenshot from the demo environment. Uh, we're basically on your Apple tab for software management. Um, in addition to seeing Mac OS, you're gonna see the mobile OSs as well. Um, you'll be able to handle, uh, you know, the licensing use cases and reclamation. Um, all of that will work. Um, this, of course, is going to be for um, corporate-owned device use cases. So anything that you would run through uh, a, a true device enrollment flow or an ADE flow, an out-of-box out of flow, where you, you really are using a corporate device. So that's what we're targeting first. Um, and this is, this is really exciting. So um, for those of you who have joined us this year on the iOS journey, um, hopefully this is good news and, uh, you know, really exciting and we want you to try it and give us feedback. Okay, Chase, I, I don't know if I have anything else. Those were the highlights from my perspective. So I will turn it back over to you and Sundar. Perfect. Thank you so much, Greg. And Sundar, if you could hop on and introduce yourself. Absolutely. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Chase. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sundar Jai Shekhar. I head uh, product initiatives here for data services. Uh, again, uh, before I get started, it's always very encouraging and overwhelming to see the number of people who join these webinars. So thank you for joining. Thank you for helping us share our roadmap and our vision and what we're thinking about here uh, in Jump Cloud. So Eric walked us to uh, identity and access management. Greg walked us through device management. As you can clearly see, there's a lot we're trying to do. Uh, we're listening to how you're using the products. We're listening to the gaps that you tell us about, and we are iterating on those requirements as fast as we possibly can. Uh, it's very similar with data services as well. Uh, for those of you who are new to the term data services, uh, my team uh, tries to do the best we can when it comes to assimilating data from all the different services and making the most out of them. And we do that in a number of different ways. We have insights products uh, that you are all familiar with, with directory insights as well as system insights. Um, we also have these dashboards on the homepage that we are completely revamping and refreshing. And we have reports. In addition to all of these things that you're already used to, we're also launching some exciting new services in Q3 and beyond. So stay tuned. We'll get into uh, each one of those uh, in the next few slides. 
Uh, firstly, um, I'm going to cover three topics today. One is uh, what are the announcements for Jump Cloud reports. Uh, the second one is a new and exciting service called Cloud Insights, which is a public cloud observability service. And last, I'll end the I'll end the section with uh, all the new stuff that's coming in the homepage widgets and dashboards. Next slide, please, Chase. So with Jump Cloud reports, uh, just stepping back a little bit. Um, one of the, the most frequently requested data product was, hey, can you give us reports that helps us with compliance, uh, with IT operations, so on and so forth. So earlier uh, in Q1, we went to EA with uh, users to resources reports. Basically, these were reports that gave you visibility into, hey, give me a list of all my employees and the devices they have access to, and all the details associated with that. So we provided you that as an EA, and then we went GA uh, a month ago. What we really did between EA and GA is to make sure the performance of the reports, download the scalability of the data all existed because all of these reports was being launched on a brand new data platform. So that was hum humongously uh, successful. To give you an idea, in the EA, 39% of the customers that we reached out to uh, had adoption within the first two weeks. That's incred incredibly encouraging uh, for and validation of the efforts we're putting into reports. So in Q3, uh, we're doing a couple of different things. We are releasing three new reports. Uh, uh, we're starting with uh, the SSO, uh, uh, the SSO reports, users to SSO reports. We are also launching the OS patching status reports and the browser patch management uh, status reports. As you, as Greg alluded to earlier, we are incredibly excited with the OS patch management service, and we are doing everything we can to give you all the bells and whistles around that service. And this is an initiative in that direction. Uh, in addition to the three new reports, we are also adding a new capability, uh, which is the stored uh, reports queue. Uh, where you can actually see a queuing of all the reports that you've run in the last uh, seven days. Next slide, please. Here is a, uh, an additional, uh, you know, uh, a slide or a mock chart uh, of how the stored reports queue would look like. Um, what you have on the bottom of the screen is really what you have today. And once the stored report queue comes out in the next few weeks, you will have the ability to look at all the reports, uh, which IT admin has run them, and if you have views for the same report, instead of having to download again, you'll have it readily available for you to view. If a report is taking uh, a few seconds, or uh, if the data sets that you're accessing is large, we also show the reports that are pending, and you'll also be notified in the portal once those reports are completed, and you can actually download them as a CSV file. Next slide, please. So in the next uh, two slides, we are gonna look at what does the new reports really look like. So in this particular slide, what we're looking at is an OS patch management status report. If you look at, if you look at the lines, it's pretty self-explanatory where you get the policy name that, that, that actually is, uh, you get the policy name along with the device host name and the display name for the host. And most importantly, you get the policy status, whether it was successfully executed or not. In the case it was a fail uh, uh, execution, then we give you an exit code message as to why that particular policy failed. It could be a device being offline. It might be a case where the uh, patch management has taken place, but we're waiting for a user report, so on and so forth. Again, you have additional details there that you can actually read offline. I'm not gonna go through every one of them. But the idea here is now you have a single report that gives you an OS patch management status across your fleet. Next slide, please. So with <clears throat> the users to SSO report is incredibly interesting. So like I said, uh, with the reports today, you have access to users to devices, but then we also said, hey, how about users to SSO? We don't have a report for that. So this is the report that addresses that question. If you look at uh, the first line, for example, you have a person, uh, A Baker one, uh, we, we give you additional details on how the association has happened between the user and the SSO connection. 
uh, an indirect connection would be something that the user has access to via a user group name. And we give you details on the user group name there as well. Every line item here, every line is a user to SSO application combo. So if A Baker one has uh, an SSO connector into two different applications, you have two different entries there, one for Salesforce and another for ADP, and so on and so forth. Next slide, please. So, so we talked about the three new reports and the new reporting capability. Now let's talk about uh, Cloud Insights. We are incredibly excited about this new service. You know, this is first of the services within the data services uh, that pertains to the cloud. Uh, this is an AWS observability and monitoring uh, uh, service. Um, you know, basically what this really addresses, uh, as you can stay on the, yeah, that's fine, that's fine, Jason. Um, so basically, if you're looking at this in terms of what, what are the pain points that customers have asked for, is essentially we're trying to answer four different questions through visibility. The first one is, who has access to what in the cloud? Number one, a very basic question. What actions are users taking uh, on the cloud resources with the permissions they have? That's the second one. The third one is, are the users within the cloud centrally managed? You know, where are they configured? Are they centrally managed within the Jump Cloud IDP, the Jump Cloud directory service? Or are they configured within the AWS IAM uh, service? Or are they coming as a federated user from somebody else? So if your goal is to centrally manage all of the users accessing your cloud resources, then Cloud Insights will help you uh, with the visibility. You know, last but not the least, our aim with Cloud Insights is to help each and every one of you with with attaining uh, you know, the principles of least privilege, which is incredibly hard in a cloud environment where you know, the, the resources are ephemeral, new services come and go, and, and therefore the accesses come and go. You also have the issue with who's centrally managing cloud accesses. Is it the IT department? Is it the engineering department? Is it DevOps? So our goal here is to give you the right visibility so you all can coordinate and take the right actions with the ultimate goal of achieving principles of least privilege for your public cloud infrastructure. Cloud Insights, we're starting the story with AWS, but our goal is to expand it to other clouds as well. Next slide, please. Again, this one, um, basically this is an eye chart which, you know, uh, our goal here is to tell you all the different uh, use cases and the jobs to be done with Cloud Insights. You know, this could be a compliance play where if you're looking for a quick evidence gathering for your audits, uh, it can definitely help you with all the cloud accesses. Security monitoring is another key piece uh, that Cloud Insights helps with, especially around events like permission escalations, you know, after our activities, we had nothing of this shot that answered these questions in the John Cloud ecosystem before. And it's our goal to get into and give you the same insights we provided for your non-cloud non uh, uh, IT resources. We, we're providing the same kind of visibility for your cloud resources as well. You know, day-to-day -day monitoring, business as usual monitoring for IT, uh, and troubleshooting are other use cases that, that will be uh, incredibly influenced by this new service. So now let's look at uh, a screenshot of what this service really looks like, right? Um, a, a, a picture speaks a thousand words, so let's spend a few minutes on, on this particular slide. If you look at the slide, uh, and, and by the way, once you uh, once you purchase the Cloud Insights queue, it will be available on the primary navigation bar on the left-hand side under Insights as Cloud Insights. Once you click on that, uh, what you get is, initially this is an M MVP vision that's coming out uh, at the end of August and will we'll constantly add to the capabilities. But in the initial get-go, what you'll get is a table that you see on the slide. Um, it lists all the users uh, with all the recent activities showing up on the top. It tells you uh, the AWS account in which the, uh, uh, the activity happened. It tells you the event, the resources that were touched, what actions were taken along with the resource ID and all the uh, like the RN, RN ID from, from AWS. What's really interesting, at least to me, is the second column, right? When you look at the user name, you, you see three, sorry for um, not so great mock-up of the screen, but you see three types, types of users, users, right? If you look at Gregory, 
Gregory has the jump cloud icon against it. That just means Gregory is, uh, is, is configured in the directory, in the jump cloud directory, and jump cloud is the IDP for Gregory. If you look at, uh, if you go down, down to Vanessa has a red cloud against it, this is, uh, this user could, uh, may or may not be managed by jump cloud, but essentially they have an AWS SSO connect connector associated with that user. Uh, and then you have Alex, who has neither of the two. And Alex is a user. Uh, we don't know where they're configured from. They're neither in the jump cloud as an IDP or uh, or the AWS SSO connector doesn't exist, which essentially means most likely Alex was configured within the AWS IAM space, or it could be federated from another directory service. So just knowing and understanding where all your users are coming is incredibly important in centralizing all of your users so you can centrally manage their identity and also their access management. Um, I'm going to pause here just for a second. If you have questions, please feel free to put them into the chat session uh, and then we will address them um, after this webinar or offline. Um, yeah, I think, I, I think we can move on. Uh, I want to give a, a breather for people to kind of digest the slide and uh, think of any questions. Next slide, please, Chase. So, sorry, can you move back one? Uh, so in terms of the timeline, what's coming, uh, the enhanced visibility to achieve principles of least privilege, uh, which is essentially the, the slide that we just saw, it's coming in Q3. We're doing a customer beta on August 25th, and soon after we're gonna do an EA and GA soon after that. Um, the, the, we have, a pretty large backlog on where we want to take cloud insights and some of the things that are coming soon after which we call the fast follows the first one is the aws ssh activity monitoring you know um, we've heard loud and loud and clear that people want to know what are they accessing in terms of the aws resources but they also want to know what's happening within the ssh uh, the world a lot of the engineering teams do lock up their access to the cloud, the only thing they provide, especially in the production workloads, is the ability for engineers to go in and do their stuff through SSH sessions. And, and what they want to know is, hey, what's happening within the SSH session? Who's accessing them? When are they accessing them? So it's our goal after the MVP to give you that activity monitoring within the SSH sessions. The other, uh, the, the key, uh, Key uh, notable here of Cloud Insights is, hey, we can we can connect Cloud Insights with all the other Insights products we have uh, within the data data services. If we want to know what, for example, I'll pick on Chase, if Chase has gone on access to Cloud Resource, we also want to know, and, and there is some you know uh, uh, questionable actions that Chase has taken. We also want to know what Chase has done in the non-cloud as well. Hey, what's he? What device is he accessing? Uh, if, if you are using LDAP or or radius, what uh, what uh, Wi-Fi networks is he accessing? What LDAP resources is he accessing? So if you want to know the overall view of what Chase is doing outside of the cloud, then we have to connect the dots between the cloud activity as well as the non-cloud activity. So the better together story of connecting cloud insights with other insights products is really the integration story there that will come out in early FI22. You know, last but not least, we want to go beyond AWS, right? We want to go into GCP, we want to go into Azure. We want this to be a multi-cloud Clouds inside story so that um, the, uh, you don't have to go point to point solutions for each one of them. We will do it for you. We'll provide it. Uh, next slide, please, Chase. Yeah, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the homepage in the interest of giving you time uh, for question and answers. Um, homepage widgets, as you know, uh, last quarter we mentioned this. We've completely refreshed the homepage. Uh, homepage is uh, the landing page for you when you log in into the ID, IT admin console. Uh, we'll continue to add stuff to this homepage widget. Uh, we're adding additional details on the bird's eye view you see on the top. We're adding widgets. Uh, those are tiles that you see in the next page, uh, the one below that. Uh, actually, Chase, we can go to the next uh, slide. I think this has uh, more details. Perfect. So essentially, we're adding uh, six new capabilities to this landing page, right? They, they can come in terms of uh, widgets where you have uh, scheduled uh, user suspensions, scheduled user activations. Anytime you see non-zero numbers in these widgets, you can click on it. For example, user suspensions, you'll see if somebody's leaving the company and they're scheduled for a suspension, 
they'll give you more details. Uh, some of these, think of these as shortcuts that are actually available elsewhere in the portal as well. Maybe you have to click three or four times to get to them, but we thought it's incredibly important to give you that at, at an overview page where you can actually look at some of these things. For example, user lockouts. If an IT admin cares about keeping that number at zero, then you want a widget that highlights it in the, in the landing page uh, so that you can keep that number at zero, so on and so forth. Again, incredible number of uh, things coming on this page. Go try them out. Keep in mind that you can actually customize these pages. You know, you know in, in time, our goal is to provide you as many as 30 or 40 different widgets that you can toggle on and off, depending on how much real estate is available, so that you can track things that, uh, that you care about. Uh, next slide, please. I don't know if that's the last one. Last one for data services, sorry. So that concludes my section. Thanks, thanks everyone. Perfect, wonderful, thank you so much. And as you can see, there is a lot coming out the pipe. Um, but the good news is we have an amazing team of experts that can help you along with that journey. One of the other pieces that we've recently introduced is our own professional services. So as you're thinking through adopting all these different features, keep in mind we have implementation services that has now expanded into hands-on keyboard implementation, so a little bit more of a cruise control, um, as well as custom scripting to help you automate even those finest details within your organization. We also have a technical account manager that can sit with you and monitor all of these features and making sure that you have um, corrupt adoption as well as migration services as they're coming through. And so as we dive into that, we're actually going to launch a quick poll um, to for everyone in, in attendance. And then as you're doing that, also feel free to start loading up some of those questions so that way we can go into my favorite part, the Q&A. Okay, wonderful. All right, so thank you so much for going through that, and I'm going to invite the panel back on real quick and start running through some questions. Get my screen all set. Okay. Wonderful. All right, so we are just going to start going through rapid fire, and I guess one thing just to quickly is note, as we only have a few minutes left, we're going to do as best as we can, but feel free to throw in any and all questions that you have, so we will make sure that we have uh, asynchronous follow-up right after this to making sure that we can answer all the questions that we have coming through. Um, first question, I think in, within Eric's domain, so for automated group management, will that also include device groups or just users at the moment? So initially, the um, the first uh, drop of this release will be focused on user groups. Uh, we definitely are looking into uh, smarter management of device groups as well, but that will probably come in later on, either uh, in Q4 or maybe even into 2023. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, so the next question is, um, will Jump Cloud publish features capabilities to meet NIST as well as CMSM um, 2.0? Um, I will actually take that one really quickly. We actually have a variety of features that help um, a lot of different controls in terms of user access, device security, and other pieces. Um, and so we're actually working on that and we can follow up in terms of you know, I'd say a spreadsheet visual um, to making sure that you have controls in place in terms of what Jump Cloud can help support as well as what our organizational processes that kind of fall within the organization to make sure it helps them. Um, uh, next question we have um, around kind of the HRS integration scenario. So what are the, the current HRS integrations that we have? And then any more on the roadmap that we might be looking at, um, specifically Trinet? So yes and yes. Um, currently, we, as, uh, as you all know, we support Bamboo and um, ADP and Namely and Personio, and we have a list of um, HRIS integrations that we've 
identified uh, through customer research that are the you know at the top of the list uh, most interesting for you all we've lined them up in a queue and we are hacking at them and adding more and more as we move along wonderful thank you um next question so apple as well we kind of think about devices as well as identities will we see apple passkey support this fall um Absolutely, we're focusing on it, and we will support it uh, when the time comes. Um, Passkey is a work in progress, uh, so um, both uh, Passkey and Platform SSO uh, we're tracking very closely. Um, next question, kind of thinking about Jump Cloud Protect and expanding that. Um, the question is, when will uh, Jump Cloud be protected also on the admin portal? So fantastic question, uh, a debate we're actually debating as we speak. Uh, we are trying to bring that in um, into the immediate future and we definitely realize that just like users want to use push for ease of access, so do admins, so we, we are working on that. Um, and just while I have you too, um, thinking about password lists as, as we get into everything that we need, day-to-day -day passwords. Will the password list, will that be leveraging the FIDO2 protocol or kind of how are we thinking about that? Right. So there are many ways to, to implement password lists. FIDO is definitely one of them. The FIDO protocol and it, uh, you know, allows you to use different token form factors. It's also used under the covers in, in, in many um, platform-based authenticators. We will be using multiple methods to provide different ways for different password list journeys. Some of them will be with built-in um, touch ID, face ID, Windows Hello integrations. Some of them will be with Jump Cloud authenticators and some will be with third-party uh, physical tokens and more. Okay, perfect. Yeah, uh, and the one thing I'm gonna jump in and add, um, we're aware of where the industry is going. So, you know, we're gonna give customers choices, whether it's FIDO or to Eric's point, something we provide. We believe in that mission. We also believe in standards. So you'll, you'll hear a lot more about that over time. Wonderful. Um, let's see, running through here. Um, in thinking about remote assist, Greg, since you just, just spoke, um, thinking about remote assist and, and the abilities that we'll able to support, um, how are we thinking about that in terms of supporting iOS devices? Well, you know, we're certainly having those discussions. Uh, you know, it's no secret we're going to be focusing on the desktop first. So, you know, in the first iteration, as an example, it'll be uh, Windows, Mac, it, it'll come to Linux, of course. Um, and uh, we will look at mobility as well. Um, the caveat being, it's a little bit more challenging to do on iOS. So imagine a supervised device, so corporate owned devices um, would be a target. Um, so uh, we're, we're definitely thinking about it. I, I think what I would ask of the community is to get, you know, more feedback on you know, um, how you use it and why you would need that today. Um, do you need that on BYO or uh, only corp devices, et cetera? So, um, you know, definitely something we're considering, um, but I'll say is not on the near-term roadmap. So um, I'll leave it at that. Wonderful. And then, um, I guess one other question, just kind of coming back into the passwordless notion, is as we think about kind of accessing user portals and other areas, when that will that kind of come into fruition for desktops and kind of devices? That's a question Greg and I love. We <laughs> we are ferociously uh, going after um, uh, that that same exact need. So. I think the the ideal which we all want, right? Us um, and and I'm sure our customers want, is to have a passwordless experience everywhere across all IT resources. Um, to be specific, what we really want is to allow a user to log in once in a passwordless fashion, and allow single sign-on onto onto everything else. Obviously, depending on access policies, uh, we are starting um, initially with the user portal as that is a use case that is used multiple times a day. A user logs into, in some cases, 20 to 30 um, SaaS applications a day. We will definitely quick follow with device login, uh, passwordless authentication on all Jump Cloud managed devices. And as I mean, as Greg mentioned, right, we will be following both 
market standards with um, Windows Hello, with Apple Touch ID and Face ID, and with other options as well. Wonderful. Okay. One thing I'd say, Chase, maybe just to follow up on that, sorry uh, for the comment, but I would love to hear from, Greg and I would love to hear from customers. Um, reach out to us, let us know your needs are highly valued and we'll be taking them into consideration when we prioritize what to go after first. Absolutely. Okay, well, I think just with a minute left, we'll grab one more question, but please keep in mind, feel free to keep adding those questions and we'll be following up right after this webinar to make sure that we are fully covered. Um, last question is, you know, as we're thinking about browser management and extending that patch, um, how are we thinking about um, when we might include Safari as a part of that bundle of applications? That's a good question. So uh, there's a reason why I admitted Safari. And that's largely because uh, Apple handles that today with the OS patch. Um, so, uh, but if there are gaps that folks see, uh, do holler, and uh, you know we'll we'll absolutely take a look at it. It was uh, not included because we thought Apple was doing a decent enough job. But I would love to hear if that's not the case. Wonderful. Well, thank you everyone so much. I know we're at the top of the hour. It's been my absolute pleasure to be hosting this Q3 roadmap questions. And as it goes without saying, if you have any questions about the features that you saw here or any gaps and features that you'd like to have within it, please reach out to the team and we'll make sure that we coordinate um, as best we can, as quickly as we can. And we hope you have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. Thank you again. Please subscribe and check out more content from us.